Hi, today I'm going to show you quite an unusual laser setup, which is a Prof laser. This laser type uses a praseodymium doped yttrium lithium fluoride crystal to produce quite a lot of visible colors. And it's also pumped by a blue laser diode, so a visible wavelength as well, which is quite unusual for solid state gain media and laser gain media in general. So let's get right into it. All right, so this is the user panel. And as you can see, we've got a little plug which feeds uh, this module the power. And then we've got three switches. One of the switches switches off and on the uh, module. Now it boots and you can see that we've got um, the pump, which is the laser diode, which pumps the crystal. And we've got zero milliamps and zero optical power of the pump. Um, I've got the temperatures of the diode and the crystal. It's quite cold in this uh, basement. And the status is ready. Now this left switch turns on the uh, pump. As you can see, we've got well, about 260 milliamps and about 230 milliwatts of optical power. If I turn this on, you can see that the laser starts lasing in the background. And if the crystal and the diode get too hot, we can activate water cooling. I think you may be able to hear that. Yeah, but uh, since this basement is quite cold, this is very rarely actually necessary. All right, so let's see what's inside this box. Okay, I've removed all the screws. As you can see, we've got quite a lot going on. And actually it's quite simple. We can break this whole thing down into three main um, compounds, basically. We've got the water cooling system in here. We've got the electronics in here. and We've got the optics in here. Now I'll very briefly talk about the electronics and the water cooling system because I think the optics uh, is the most interesting part. For the electronics, we've got, um, well, this mess basically. We've got an Arduino which controls all the electronics and all the um, measurements and stuff. And we've got a, a laser diode driver which is here. We've got a current sensing module which senses the diode current. And we've got two TEC modules, which are thermoelectric coolers, which is in here, and one under this diode, which is this block here, this one. And we've got some relays, which get activated when um, the water cooling is activated, and the water cooling without any TEC cooling can't keep up with the temperature. so. When I activate this water cooling, let me just start this up. It just activates the water without the TSC modules because the TSC modules um, draw a lot of current. So it's not quite necessary to do this when uh, the normal water cooling can't keep up. So this is the optical setup and we've got the pump diode here, which is water cooled with this little block here and the water runs through this block which is in direct contact with this laser diode module which cools it down and in this module we've got the laser diode which emits at 444 nanometers which is actually quite critical um, the bandwidth the um, absorption bandwidth of the crystal is only a few nanometers so the wavelength needs to be pretty much 444 nanometers exactly plus minus about one nanometer, I'd say. It also contains an aspheric lens, which collimates the, the laser diode. And then we've got a fixed uh, lens, which is just a F50 lens, so a bioconvex lens, which um, focuses the pump beam um, to around 50 millimeters of focal length. And this module can actually be rotated. This block can be remounted on different rotations because the um, absorption of the crystal, which is uh, this whole guy here, um, is dependent on polarization. So we need to be able to rotate this pump diode um, so that the absorption is maximum in the crystal. 
All right, now the pump beam is focused into this crystal here. This is the Perlf crystal. This is quite a small crystal. And let's now move on to the resonator. We've got a classical hemispheric resonator. So we've got a plane mirror and a concave mirror. Now this mirror, of course, is coated in such a way that the pump beam can transmit it through it and focus into the crystal, as I said. And it's highly reflective for the laser wavelength, which is about 640 nanometers in this case. But it's also quite reflective for 607 nanometers, which is orange and which I'll show you later on. And as you can see, we've got the crystal here, which is, of course, um, coated with an um, anti-reflection coating for the pump wavelength. And then we've got the output coupler here, which is um, reflective for the pump wavelength. And it is transmissive at about um, one or two percent for the laser wavelength, red or orange. And as soon as this thing lasers, it, well, it creates a laser beam, which is quite divergent. So I use this um, collimating lens, which, it, which is just a plano uh, convex lens, which collimates the laser beam. And then we've got a filter here, which filters all the pump wavelength out because some of the blue light actually makes it through this output coupler. And we don't want that, so the blue wavelength is filtered out using this filter here. And that's basically it. Actually quite a simple setup. Um, so let's see how this looks when I turn on the pump or the laser diode. As you can see, the crystal emits quite a lot of light. Um, and it's actually pretty white. And that's because uh, the crystal emits in several different wavelengths. And of course, with light, different wavelengths combine into white light. So we've got a white fluorescent crystal, which is very beautiful. And as you can see, when I turn on the laser, or the pump diode, the laser actually starts lasing. And you can actually see the um, intracavity beam in here, which is because the um, Intensity is so high that you can see the uh, red light through Rayleigh scattering of the air around in this um, basement. It's not because the, there's any dust in the room or something like that. Now, of course, the intensity is pretty high outside the laser as well, because the beam contains quite a lot of power. And I can demonstrate that using a little bit of electrical tape and a focusing lens. So if I just find the focal point here, I can actually cut this electrical tape. Yep, and there we go. So this laser is actually quite powerful. And there's another thing that I wanted to show you, which you can see quite nicely with this laser type, which is TEM modes. TEM, TEM modes are basically diffraction um, patterns, which you, you can see depending on the alignment of the laser. Now, of course, most people are familiar with this round spot, which is the TEM00 mode, the ground mode, if you will. And this is the mode that most manufacturers actually want because it contains the most power density. But depending on the resonator type and the resonator alignment, you can get different modes. And you can see this is a, if I de-align this laser type. Now we've got this, which is a TM10 mode. So we've got two high spots basically. And we can create much more of these or many more of these modes when we de-align the laser beam. And this is not some kind of filter. This is just by aligning the laser mirrors. Now 
And as you can see, these patterns get to be quite beautiful. As you can see. Of course, one of the most impressive properties of the Prilf crystal is its capability to emit a different wavelengths. And the other one before was about 639 nanometers, which is quite a deep red. It's actually a very similar wavelength to helium neon lasers. And this is now 607 nanometers. So this is a lot more orange, a lot more yellow than the other one. Of course, it's still red, but it's it's more of an uh, orange red. And as you can see, this is um, possible with a different mirror here. And you can also see that the Rayleigh scattering inside the resonator is still present with this wavelength. I've actually been able to um, get green light out of this crystal as well. It's a lot more finicky um, in setup. Um, and I'll, I will show you a picture right on screen somewhere. Um, but I've actually been able to pull this off. So this crystal is really, really wonderful because you get many different lasers, basically laser wavelengths using just one crystal essentially and different mirrors, of course. All right, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this content, please consider giving this video a like. And if you like lasers in general, lasers like this, you can consider subscribing to this channel because I've got quite some interesting lasers coming up. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.